So, uh, does anybody have any questions? Okay, well, we don't have enough time for all of those questions. Um, does anybody know what a vector is? Yes, Ken. Can it go to the No, you cannot. Anybody else know what a vector is? Joe? Quantity that has magnitude and direction. Good job, Joe. Okay. So, does anybody else know what uh, dilation is? <laughs> really? There's nobody from this side of the room that wants to answer a question. <sighs> Alright, I think I can change this. By the way, you all forced me into it. Now I can use my powers of symmetry to reflect this side of the class onto this side of the class. <sighs> okay, that's much better. Now, does anybody have a question? Me, 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 me. Hey, do you see how I use symmetry in order to double my class? You might as well do that more often. Well, anyways, today we're going to be learning about symmetry and dilations. It's pretty quick, so stay tuned and check it all out. I might even have to zap myself. Okay, welcome to uh, the lesson on symmetry. All right, let's start off to define uh, an example of symmetry. If we look at this butterfly here, okay, we can see that the line of symmetry is this line M. We can go right through the butterfly and it turns out that on this side of the butterfly is the same as this side it's like a mirror image kinda like a reflection like the distance from here to here we have this is gonna be the same length as here to here we go from here to this line of symmetry this is gonna be all the same distances that's where we get a symmetric line the line of symmetry is the actual line that is going to cut a shape in half and on each side will be a reflection and we can develop um, different types of lines of symmetry. Here there's a line of symmetry right here because on each side uh, there's the same. And then the other line of symmetry would be right here because this top half is the same as this bottom half. Or it's like folded on top of it, just like a, a book, opening up a book. Here there's one, two, three. As you notice, each one, this one, it's flipped. This one, it's top and bottom. And this one over here and over here are the same. How many line of symmetries are in this one? If we go this way, that doesn't work. This way, that doesn't work. It only seems like there is one line of symmetry, which is right across the middle. So we have one there. We have one here. We have three here. And here we have two. Now if we have objects or shapes down here for one, two, and three, I'm going to find the lines of symmetry. Well, it looks like we got one right here. We got the second one there. There's one right here. And there's one right here because it cuts it in half. And on each side it's the same. So we have one, one, two, three, four lines of symmetry. Here, we could cut this one. Each side is the same. We could cut this one here. Each side is the same. We could cut it here. It's the same. And we could cut it here. We have five lines of symmetry here. Oh, sorry. Here's a four. All right. And here, how many lines of symmetry does this goat have? Well, I think there's only one line. And that's right down the middle of its head and its face and its body. And on each side is the same idea. Okay. Another type of symmetry uh, we could jump into is rotational symmetry. Um, rotational symmetry is when we're going to rotate something around a circle. Okay, maybe we'll rotate it a lot, and we should be able to rotate it in order to get the same figure again. All right, we're going to have to have a center of symmetry, would be the very middle, okay, of a figure. All right, those are all the center of these ones. Okay, and let's just take examples here. If we have a parallelogram, let's take it, and let's make the parallelogram. How many 
rotational symmetries does it have? Well, if I pick it up, I can rotate it around. Well, if I rotate it 90 degrees, nope, it's not the same. Oh, but when I go all the way 180 degrees, it looks like it is the same again. And if we rotate it again, 180 degrees, it's the same again. So here there's a rotational symmetry at 180 degrees. Okay, and let's look at a hexagon, or this is a octagon. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. And when is it going to be the same again? Well, if I turn it this way, there's 45. We have it at 90. We have it at 135. And we have it at 180. So here there's a bunch. There's 45, 90, uh, 135 and 180 degrees we have rotational symmetry. Here is a trapezoid. And where are we going to have rotational symmetry here? Well let's spin this around and find out. If I spin it around, no rotational symmetry there, no rotational symmetry there, no rotational symmetry. Oh we're going back 360 degrees and I have no rotational symmetry here. So this has no rotational symmetry. Okay. Okay, let's dive into dilations. Okay, if we're going to dilate this figure, okay, we remember that dilations, it really goes off from the points. So if I just keep on going on and on and on, I gotta draw a line from its points. Okay, it's gonna be dilated out into space. Okay, let's say this is X distance from this point to this point. Okay, then if I'm going to dilate it by, let's dilate it by scale factor of 2, then I'm going to need to find 2x. Okay, the distance from here to here will be 2x. Okay, and then let's take our shape, and we need to line up those points. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's see here, that's going to be there. Maybe it's going to be a little bit smaller. And there we go. We just doubled it in size um, by just by eye. Okay, and there's other ways we can do it. We can do it using uh, matrices. Okay, what is a scale factor? Okay, what is scalar multiplication? Well, let's say we have a matrix and it's 2, 3, 4, and 2. And I'm going to multiply it by a number in the front. What does that really mean? What is that going to equal? It well, it's going to be the same dimensions, and really it's 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 times 3, which is 6. 2 times 4, which is 8. And 2 times 2, which is 4. That's scalar multiplication. Okay, now what's a scale factor? Well, that's how much we're going to dilate something. All right, and let's use it during matrices. Okay, let's make this a shape, and let's dilate this by a scale factor of 3. Okay, that's going to be our scale factor for this problem. But we need to make a matrix first. So, let's slash because we're doing a we're doing a new one. Okay, so we'll slash this out. And let's take this matrix. What is this matrix down here? Well, we have 2 comma 3, 2 comma 3. We have 2 comma 1 and we have 3 comma 1 as our points. Okay, and I'm going to put it by a scale factor of 3, so I just multiply 3 out front and we're going to get this new matrix. So we end up getting 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 1 is also 3. So let's draw our new points. We have 6, comma 9. It's going to be way up here. We have 6, 3. It's going to be right here. We have 9, 3. 9, 3. And here is our new triangle that is 3 times bigger than the original. And we can even draw lines to notice about our dilation with this scalar. Okay? Everything grows out of each other. Okay, so those two chapters are pretty easy. Um, and I'd like you to try some of the problems that I'm about to post. Have a nice day.